Hello, everybody. Welcome to a midweek moment of reflection as we continue to figure our way through this time of pandemic. My name is Pastor Pete. I have the privilege of serving God here in Brookings at the First United Methodist Church. So every week we stop on a Wednesday night. Currently, we have been invited to bring a children's book with us that has spoken to us. And so we continue that exploration. And in a moment, I will talk about a new children's book. But before we do that, let's pray together. Lord God, we say thank you for the gift of today. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for the strength you've given us through the day. Thank you for this opportunity now to pause and gain strength. You, you are with us in both the good times and the times when we're tired. And tonight we offer you this moment to pause, to reflect, to draw strength. We acknowledge that you're the one who gives us life and you're the one who continues to nurture our lives. So grant us a moment of new breath as we pause. Grant us a moment of manner in the middle of this week. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So when Pastor Krista suggested that we should look at children's books, I did realize that for some of us, it goes back far further than others. We have the sense of children's books we grew up with. Then for some of us, children's books that we've read to our children. And then for those of us who have the privilege of being grandparents, we revisit these books all over again as we read them to our grandchildren. I have this memory, this memory with my granny. Granny said to me, let's go to the shops. And I must have been six years old, maybe. And granny and I set off to the shops and we caught the bus, which was a big event for me because I would not caught a bus before. We got onto the bus. I was privileged enough to have a window at the seat could look out the window, could see the world going by. Then came that big moment when I pressed the button to tell the driver that our stop was coming up. And he stopped and we got off the bus. And, and it really was great fun. But the reason why it stuck is because a few weeks later, in the school library, I came across a book about the bus. And I discovered I could read this book in all my limited reading capacity. I could read the book, probably because there are not so lots of words to it, probably because the words are repeated, probably mostly because we had also learnt the words of this book as a song at school. And recently, I found the book again because my grandson often phones, he's three, and Benjamin phones and he says, Granny, Grandpa, read me a story. And so we went out and got some books. And I came across the book all over again. So let me take you back to when I was five, or let me take you back to my story with my grandson this morning. But it's the kind of story you don't read, it's the kind of story you sing. So bear with me as I sing. I'll just sing the first verse. It's on the first page. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. Come on, guys, why weren't you singing with me? Can we do it again? The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. The amazing thing about the story 
It was first published, I looked it up, in 1939 by Werner Hills. Written at a time when children were just starting to go to school by bus and thought to have been written to make catching a bus a more fun event. And so Werner Hills publishes this song and it catches on. Today has spread across the world, is sung in every country in the world, sung in many, many different languages. Um, and, and literally a really versatile song because after the wheels you can go for anything. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish all day long. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep all day long. And so you can continue. You can have grannies on the bus and you can have babies on the bus. And this particular book, when I get to it, in fact, even has the crocs on the bus, the crocodiles on the bus go yakety yak. I don't know when last you had crocodiles on your bus, but it's, it's that kind of song that everybody is on the bus, the grannies, the babies, the drivers, the mommies, the daddies, and even the crocodiles. Which, which is not really true, is it? Because the fact is, us human beings have a history of not wanting people on the bus. Certainly when I talk about my own history, I go back to that bus trip with my granny. There I was as a little six-year-old boy getting on the bus with granny. And I was aware that there was another line of people who were waiting for the bus as well. And I was aware that they would wait for their own bus, which was a black bus. And we were getting on our bus, which was a white bus. And, and I really thought that's the way the world worked. There were white buses for white people and black buses for black people. And the wheels on the bus went round and round, each, each for their own people. Until, until I started reading the Bible. And as I read the scriptures, I discovered that the followers of Jesus did not see life like this at all. The followers of Jesus saw the passengers on the bus in a very different way. When I look at Jesus, when I look at Jesus calling people to be his disciples, I discovered that there are not different lines for different people. See if you can pick it up with me. I'm going to Matthew chapter 10, and then I'm going to go to Luke chapter 8. Matthew 10 tells Jesus collecting people to be his disciples. I'm picking up at verse 2, Matthew 10 verse 2. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who's called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. So Matthew 10, that's one collection of the disciples of Jesus. When you go to Luke 8, you find the other disciples as well. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's, Herod's household. Susanna, and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. So, so here are the people who get on Jesus' bus. Men and women. I know history.
history has done a good job of trying to persuade us that Jesus only had male disciples. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible is quite clear. Jesus had men and women who followed him, who learned from him, who, who, who were his disciples. In Jesus' bus, he had some who supported the government, like Matthew, the tax collector, and Joanna, who was married to the, to the minister of finance of Herod. And then there was Simon the Zealot. Simon, the one who belonged to the group fighting to replace the government. Mostly Jewish, except there was Philip, who was Greek. Some who were religious, and some like Mary, from whom seven demons were driven out. You see, the wheels on Jesus' bus turned round and round for everyone. There wasn't a, a line for men and a line for women. They all got on the bus. There wasn't a line for sinners and a line for the righteous. They were all together. There wasn't a line for foreigners and a line for locals. In fact, there was even space on the bus of Jesus for Judas who betrayed Jesus. Now, now don't think that this was easy. That early Christian community really struggled to cope with everybody who was getting on the bus. And if you go to Acts chapter 15, you will read of the first big church debate about who should actually be on the bus. As the Jewish originated followers of Jesus struggled to understand that the non-Jewish originated followers of Jesus were welcome on the same bus. And eventually the Council of Jerusalem made this decision that everyone, both Jew and Gentile, are welcome on the bus. There have been other moments in the life of our Christian history where we have argued with each other about who exactly should get on the bus. But each time the Spirit of God has prompted us to discover that everyone is welcome on the bus. There was a time where there was a huge debate about whether slave owners and slaves belonged on the same bus. And we were tempted to say there should be different buses. But the Spirit of God said there is only one bus for Jesus. Um, there's, there's literally not a line for us and another line for those we don't like. Or as the song says, the grannies are on the bus, the babies are on the bus, the moms and the dads are on the bus. As the gospel says, the blind people, the poor people, the gay people, the non-religious people, everyone is welcome on the bus. Because ultimately it is God's bus. We merely help people into the bus. Convicting people about what they believe, convicting people about right and wrong, that's the work of the Spirit. It's not our job to be bus conductors deciding who are desirable and who get thrown off. Our job is to offer the grace of God, to say to everyone, the wheels on the bus go round. God welcomes you aboard. Be open to the work of the Spirit in your life as you discover God shaping you. The bus driver, the bus driver is God. And God will lead us where God chooses to lead us if we are willing to submit our lives to him. So I am going to invite you. Guys, let's go back to the book. Let's maybe for a moment discover our own spiritual roots in it and see if it makes sense. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish all day long. 
The granny's on the bus go nit 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 nit. At which point my grandson says, Yes, but what about the grandpas on the bus? So we also have an answer. The grandpas on the bus go. <laughs> at which point he says, Yes, that's how grandpas are. So pray with me. Pray with me that we might learn to become welcoming, that we might discover that the bus of Jesus has space for everyone because it is God who shapes our lives. It's God who invites us. We are merely on the bus to welcome people with the grace, the loving grace of God. Let's pray. Lord God, receive our lives. Receive our lives because we know that even though we are not great, we don't always get stuff right. We often fall on our faces. You say to us, there's space on the bus. We are grateful for that welcome. We're grateful that you say there is room for us. Teach us how to extend the same grace to others. Teach us how to allow room for others to be blessed as well that we might extend your loving grace to all people that we might be less the bus conductor and more the passenger who says i'll shift up there's room for more bless us bless our homes bless our city bless our country that we might learn to be welcoming graceful loving disciples of Jesus. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so may God bless you and may God keep you. May God give you strength for the rest of this week. You are welcome to join us on Sundays at 10 o'clock, either in person or online. I'm really grateful for those who stay online because you keep us safe. Um, I would invite us to a gathering in October, the 11th of October. We will be gathering at the band shell in the park. So um, probably the last time we'll get together as a larger crowd before winter arrives. May the grace of God, may the love of Jesus, and may the presence of the Spirit be yours today and forever. Amen. Amen.